What's up, everybody? Once again, my name is Matt, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Platinum. In the last episode, we defeated Galactic Boss Cyrus inside of his HQ, and then he went to Mount Coronet. So in this episode, well, it is time to chase after him. So we are going to fly like the wind, Tonto, and make our way all the way back to Orberg City. That way, we can enter Mount Coronet and start scaling our way to the tippity-top. That way, we can meet Mr. Cyrus. And this is actually, like one of my favorite parts of the game like this is where things start to get really really awesome with the plot and everything like that so pay attention if you haven't already because it's about to get serious up in this business if you know what i'm saying anyways we do have a very very long trek to the top of mount cornet like this is probably the longest journey in the entire game and there are a few like team galactic members we may have to fight along the way i think you can skip a couple of them if you are uh, crafting up but before we go any further actually let's put a rappel on just because yeah I bought a few of them off screen I actually went to the department store in uh, Veilstone and I got a bunch of like repels some antidotes some burn heals basically any status condition that uh, Team Galactic can inflict on me with their Pokemon I made sure I bought something to combat that because there's only one spot where you can actually heal yourself um, in this entire journey and it's all the way at the end so it's really not like the most useful thing in the world but I guess considering with what's to come it actually is really really useful but um for what we need it for yeah we're not actually gonna find use in it until after we're already done with everything that I plan to do in this episode which will make more sense once we actually get there I know I'm being strangely vague about this but I don't want to spoil anything anyways while we're going through Mount Coronet obviously there's going to be a ton of items that you can pick up so I'm gonna try and get most of them or at least most of the important ones like for instance I believe right here we have TM80 rock slide which is a really really awesome move although I don't know that I'm actually going to teach it to any of my Pokemon and I am going the wrong way it is very easy to get lost in this area by the way and over here we've got ourselves a Max Revive, very nice, but like I was saying, uh, Mount Coronet can actually be a pretty tricky place to navigate if you don't know exactly where you're going. Real quick, let me just pop on another Rappel, I'm pretty much just going to spam these like every time they run out because I really don't want to encounter any wild Pokemon, and hey it's Looker, what's he doing here man? Observe if you will, that hole, what about it? There was once a cave painting that had blocked the way to the summit. But the wall, it is no longer there. It lies in pieces, do you see? Indeed I do. Ever since the three Pokemon of the lakes have been captured. Something terrible is happening. But what exactly? I do not know. There is but one cause. Team Galactic Cyrus. And now, we're all caught up. Now, to the next step. Are you trainer enough to advance? Show me if you will. Um, ha ha ha, you can relax now. What was that about? You see, I understand. You are far superior to me. As are the commanders. Cyrus too, naturally. Team Galactic is beyond my reach. Please, you must stop them. For only you are able. All I can do now is give you this. It's a little something I obtained in an investigation long ago. And it gives us the Black Flute. Nice, thanks man. Appreciate it. Please, you must stop Team Galactic. Alright man, a member of the International Police has trusted a 10 year old to stop a criminal organization. Can we do it? The answer to that is of course we can. And ooh, actually I might be able to run past this trainer. Ha, screw you Team Galactic. You are just... Can I? Oh my gosh, I ran past two of them. That is freaking awesome. Normally, like... It's pretty difficult to get past both of those guys without battling at least one of them, but whatever. Now we are on top of the mountain. Now here's where it gets a little bit confusing. Like, you can get lost around this area very, very easily since there's a ton of entrances to, like, different caves and a few different routes that you can take. But, uh, thankfully for you guys, I planned my route ahead of time, so assuming my memory serves me well, I should have no problem navigating Mount Coronet, and we should be able to get to the top uh, pretty soon. I'd say we're about like halfway there. Let me just sneak past this guy, not even paying attention. But it does look like I will have to battle this guy, unfortunately. The streak had to end at some point, so I'll take this guy on. Let's do this. 
All right, well, that was probably the first of many battles to come, unfortunately, but hey, you can't skip them all, at least. Anyways, let's keep moving up this mountain now. Here's normally where I get lost. Um, I think I need to go up on the left side and find a cave somewhere in this area, and then I should be all right. Although, if I can't find the cave, then that might be a problem. Let me pop on another Max Repel real quick. And now we are free to go. It's a good thing that I stopped in the store and bought more of those, because I'm pretty sure I would have run out by now. Although, I do have a few super repels, so that could have, like, tied me over until we had gotten to the top of the mountain. Speaking of which, I think we're at the last stretch. We've got a few more trainers to fight, though, unfortunately. Starting with you, so I'm going to take you down one by one. All right, now that guy is down, let's move on to this next guy. Hooray! More battles. <sighs> All right, and moving on, I still think we have, like, maybe two more Galactic Grunts that are required. And speak of the devil. There he is. All right, let's just get this one over with. And now that that battle is done, we can finally exit to the top of Mount Cornet. Here we are at the Spear Pillar, but before we go any further, we've got to do a double battle with these Team Galactic Grunts. Alright, that is that. It's time to go and confront Cyrus. But first, we actually do have to battle two of the other Galactic Commanders, so... Let me actually swap a pwn out front, because I believe they start off with a bronzer, and I definitely want to get that out ASAP. I'm also taking the experience here off of Carlton, because I don't want that annoying message appearing up after, like, every time I KO a Pokemon. It gets really, really obnoxious. But here we go. Where do you think you're going? I won't let you disturb our boss. If you're not going to listen, you'll have to go through me first. After all, you've made me look bad more times than I care to remember. And I'll be next. You might be tough, but this time, the gloves are coming off. Pfft, whatever, I'll take you on any day. Hold on one second. Hey, it's TJ. Don't you start the party without me. What are you doing here, dude? Huh? Remember me? I'm here to get my revenge. Oh, snap. Ha! If it isn't that little boy. The little crybaby from Lake Acuity. Did you toughen up a bit? Sure, let's battle two on two. Oh, snap. We about to throw down with my boy TJ on our side. All right, here we go. Me and TJ, we're taking on Mars and Jupiter. They're gonna start out with two Bronzors, which is why I swapped out two opponents. Although TJ's got a Munchlax. I'm not really sure what that is going to do in this situation, but I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flamethrower one of these Bronzors just to try and get it out of here because I don't want these things like putting us to sleep or confusing us and junk like that. It would just make my day a lot worse than it needs to be. So hopefully TJ's Munchlax will do something and gosh dang, it went for the Confuse right on the first turn. I only got one attack out before they confused me. That is in oh, TJ, really? Screech? Come on, dude. Come on, like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely honest. A lot of this fight is going to depend on TJ RNG. So if we get lucky and TJ smart and maybe the enemy like Pokemon focus him, which they actually are doing, which is kind of nice, then maybe this battle will go quick. But if we get like bad TJ RNG and he just does really, really stupid stuff like, like stockpile, <laughs> um, this battle might go on for a very very long time. I'm gonna really hope we can go for the flamethrower. Come on. Yes, there we go. All right, that should actually, that might not take out this uh, Bronzor. It might at least get it low enough that way maybe Munchlax can attack it if it does something. It's probably gonna die though, isn't it? Yep, wow. Munchlax, what a great Pokemon, everybody. What a great Pokemon. Literally did absolutely not. I don't even think it was able to attack. It did stockpile and did like nothing the entire time. All right, the Infernape's coming out. That should definitely be useful in taking down the Bronzor. So what I'm going to do is actually swap out to, um, actually, who do I want to swap into? I want to get rid of the Skunk Tank. So I think I'm going to swap into Nettler just because I can Mud Bomb it or whatever. And I think that's a ground-type move, and Skunk Tank will completely, like, die to that, hopefully. 
Close combat's coming out by Infernate. Sweet, that'll take care of that bronze ore. Thank goodness, I really wanted that thing out of here like ASAP, just because that can be so annoying with its confuse ray and crap like that. Oh no, the poison jab is coming out. Uh, please don't get poisoned. That still did pretty decent damage, but it was a crit, so I guess that's to be expected. Gobat's coming out, not really scared of that at all. Let's just go for the mud bomb on that skunk tank, or never mind, TJ could close combat it. That might actually kill it, I'm not entirely sure. Um, wow man, TJ stole my thunder on that one. How rude, I mean, I'm not gonna complain, maybe we might be actually getting some good TJ RNG, but like still, I wanted to kill the skunk tank. And now, of course, Nettler's attack was completely wasted. Um, let's see, what should I do, what should I do? I could swap out to Amp. Actually, I could just use Ice Beam on Nettler as well, and I think I might just do that just so I don't have to swap out. Although, Nettler is kind of low, and now there's two Golbats on the field. Now, uh, you know, we'll see what the Ice Beam does. If it doesn't do enough damage, then I'll just swap out to Amp, no big deal. Let's see, the Flame Wheel took it down to half. Air Cutter is coming out, not really going to do too much damage to us, although Nettler actually, ooh, Infernape died from that, actually, hang on, I really hope Nettler can survive that, please don't, okay, wow, that actually did, like, negative damage to us, I don't know why I was even worried about that, that one did a little bit of damage, Ice Beam coming out, though, let's see, how much will this do, maybe if we're lucky, we'll get, like, a freeze off of that, but I highly doubt it, only took it down to half, alright, you know what, and I think it's time that we should just swap into Amp because Nettler's a little bit too low. I don't want to risk him dying, and I know Amp can take care of these Golbats in like two seconds with uh, Thunder Fang or Shockwave. Whatever. Either one of those moves will be able to take care of a Golbat like super easily. Um, I will admit though, this is actually one of the harder like commander battles in the game. Although I, I really believe it's because we have TJ. Like, I think. If it was a normal battle or even a normal double battle, this would go a lot faster. But just because we have TJ fighting with us, it's a little bit slower and it does depend a lot on what he does. Like, I'm not saying he's a bad trainer, I'm just saying that he makes some questionable calls in this Pokemon battle. Alright, let's see what the next Pokemon coming out is, because I'm not, I'm not actually sure. And of course, TJ would miss his attack and the Poison Fang. Don't get poisoned. Come on. Gosh dang it. I knew that was going to happen at some point. Uh, at least it happened in this battle. At the end of this battle, TJ will actually heal up our Pokemon to full. So I'm not really too worried about that poison. Although it does like uh, have an effect on Amp's stats, which stinks a little bit. But I think now the Golbats are gone. Um, I don't really need Amp anymore. So I can probably just swap him out for someone who's not affected. Uh, let's see what the next Pokemon are though. Oh, there's only one Pokemon left, and it is per ugly sweet. So I'm going to swap into Lofty because this thing is weak to fighting type moves, and I could probably just close combat this thing to death. Although TJ does have Float Zell out, and I think that thing knows Brick Break. So that might actually be able to KO it before I get a chance to attack. And there's the Brick Break. Alright, TJ was smart enough to at least use a uh, decent move. And now let's go for the close combat. Hopefully this thing will... No, not the hypnosis. Gosh dang it. Of course. Puts me to sleep. Alright, well, at least TJ should be able to take this thing out with another break break. Please let this KO and not survive with like 1 HP. Because that would really just make me sad. Thank goodness. Alright, TJ. I think we had decent RNG with TJ during this fight. He actually carried his own weight, I would say. There we go, we've done it, we've defeated the two Galactic Commanders, thank goodness, that didn't take too long. Heh, my Pokemon are tough, right? Yeah, you did good, TJ. I can get even tougher. Alright, you do that, dude. But you know, that's it for us. We've hit the wall. What do you mean? Matt, I'll help you with this. Aw, thanks, buddy. He healed our Pokemon. Hey, Matt, this is it. It's your show now. Alright, see you later, TJ. And there he is. Cyrus himself. Everything is ready for the creation of a new world. Now all will end, and everything will begin. With this, the red chain I made from the crystals of the three lake Pokemon. And this, the red chain I replicated with technological means. With these red chains, I will pry open the portal to another dimension. I command that you unleash your power for me!
Dialga, the mythical Pokemon and the Master of Time. And the other, Palkia, the mythical Pokemon and the Master of Space and Dimensions. I've waited so long for this moment, Dialga and Palkia. Shaping this world is a double spiral of time and space. Yes, the very things that you have the ability to control. You will do my bidding. I will have your abilities as mine. With the power I wield, I will create an entirely new world. The incomplete and ugly world we have now can disappear. I am resetting everything to zero. Nothing can remain. It is all for making the ultimate world. A world of complete perfection. Nothing so vague and incomplete as spirit can remain. I should have expected as much. Yuxi, the being of knowledge. Azelf, the being of willpower. And Mesprit, the being of emotion. The Pokemon have come to protect Sinnoh? Pathetic and worthless. It takes the three of them, the three lake Pokemon that symbolize spirit, to balance either the Pokemon of time or space, but they can't maintain balance against the two. Not when both Dialga and Palkia are here. Their coming here is in vain. So much meaningless drama. Now, Matt, you've constantly interfered with my plans, but you will be forgiven. After all, there will remain no spirit for all time when I am done. All spirit will disappear. It will be ripped away. From you, from your Pokemon, from those precious to you. It is time. My dream will be my reality. What is this pressure I feel? Something is enraged. Interesting. So there is a Pokemon that can only appear as a shadow. Regardless, the effort is rash and foolish. I have harnessed the powers of Dialga and Palkia. Hi, Cyrus, we won't have any more interfe- No! I'm sorry I took so long. I think I finally found the answer from studying the myths. When this world was made, Dialga and Palkia appeared. Apparently, there was one more Pokemon that appeared at the same time. A Pokemon with as much power as Dialga and Palkia. But also one whose name was never to be spoken, Giratina. 
It's said to lurk in another world, a world on the opposite side of ours. That's what the shadow was. It must have been Giratina. The pillars are distorting. It's because of that portal. It's joined us to the other world. If it's not closed, the distortion will spread to Sinnoh and beyond. Our world will be destroyed. Are you ready? We have to chase Cyrus. We have to hurry. This place. Can you feel it? There are no Pokemon here at all. Time isn't flowing, and space isn't stable. A world where the rules are broken. A space one might call the distortion world. Let's find Giratina. We need it to stop the spreading distortion at the Spear Pillar. Alright, I'm not sure how exactly you know so much about this place, Cynthia, but I'll take your word. That was Giratina! We have to hurry. If something's not done, the distortion will swallow not only our world, it will overwhelm the distortion world. Alright, and that is probably one of the coolest parts of this game. Anyways, though, I think I'm going to end off the episode here, so if you enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.